Hello and welcome. Today's demo is going to be on configuring port forwarding through static NAT mappings on a Transport WR44 router. This is going to be a very similar configuration that can be applied on any other Transport WR router. The WAN interface on this demo will be an Ethernet interface but that doesn't matter if your router is using a PPP cellular interface then the same configuration applies there and I'll show you where to make that change. We'll be using a camera, this is an IP camera listening on port 8081 and we'll be able to access this from a PC with a web browser through the internet the traffic will arrive at the WR44 and be forwarded onto the camera and this is a really common scenario it may not be a camera that you need to use it could be some control or monitoring equipment running on different port number but the configuration is basically the same first I will show you that there is no way to access the camera at the moment so up here in the address bar the address of the router 8268.87.5 colon 8081 which is the port number that we're trying to get through to on the IP camera and if we just refresh that page we'll see that it still says this page can't be displayed so let's move over to the transport router I shall log in I think there was a typo there <coughs> And I shall quickly show you the configuration that is already on this router. And this is a common scenario. You'll have a router where the WAN interface is configured like we have here. So the WAN interface on this one I say is Ethernet 0 and it's obtaining an IP address from a DHCP server. Um, Ethernet 1 is a LAN interface for some PCs to be connected and Ethernet 2 has the IP camera connected and it's on its own network 192.168.99.1 with a 24-bit mask if we scroll down a bit come into DHCP servers DHCP server for Ethernet 2 and you can see there is a DHCP pool configured for the network where the camera is connected and if we scroll down a bit further into the static lease reservations we can see here there's a static lease reservation for 192.168.99.2 with the MAC address of the IP camera and this is also really common you don't want devices on your network that you're going to be configuring port forwarding through to to have a IP address configured that changes regularly so you'd always want to either configure a static IP address on the device itself, so in this case the camera, or you can do it this way and set up a, a static lease reservation. So every time that camera is connected, it always obtains the same IP address as defined by the router configuration. And often this is a better way of doing it. I'm sure you'll agree there's nothing too advanced in there that's all pretty basic configuration that you'll probably come across every day on these routers as far as the the NAT configuration goes we need to make sure NAT is enabled on the correct interfaces we often see that NAT is applied on the wrong interface and this can break the communications so on the WAN interface only so on my router on Ethernet 0. When we scroll down you can see here that I've enabled NAT on this interface and I'm using IP address and port. If we have a look at Ethernet 1, the LAN interface into advanced, NAT is disabled. On the camera interface where we're going to be doing port forwarding to this device again NAT is disabled. So it's very important that you only apply NAT or enable NAT on the WAN side interface. There, is, there should be no need to apply NAT on the LAN side interface. If your router is 
using PPP1, which is the cellular or mobile one interface. NAT should already be enabled by default, but you would want to change this setting if it's set to IP address to this setting here, IP address and port. So even though we're not using it, I'll put it in IP address and port and click apply because if you're using a PPP interface on your router, this is exactly what you would do here. So I've made that configuration change, you need to make the same. Moving on now to the configuration of the port forwarding or the static NAT mapping. Coming to network, IP routing and forwarding, static NAT mappings, and here you can see the table that we need to complete. The external min port and external max port are the minimum and maximum port number that is needing to be forwarded on to the camera or other device behind the WR44 router. We know that the camera is listening on port 8081 and no other port numbers, so we're only going to forward on port 8081. So minimum and maximum are set to the same. The IP address that we forward on to 192.168.99.2 that's the IP address of the camera. Forward to internal port is the same port number that we know the camera is waiting for a connection on. So this is its listening port 8081. So all we're doing at the router is waiting for a socket to be opened to port 8081 and when we see that packet coming in we'll forward it on to 192.168.99.2 and we'll send it to the same port number actually at the camera. Let's add that and apply it. Now if we come over to the other tab and see if we can now get to the camera. We'll refresh the page and we've got a login now on the IP camera. Um, I shall log in. And there you can see part of my comms rack. So we know the port forwarding is working. So that's a simple port forward using the same port number from what is received on the WR44 router's WAN interface and directly forwarding that to the IP camera. But what if, say, the web browser on the management PC needs to open a, a connection through to port 80 on the router due to firewall restrictions over here and then forward on to port 8081 at the camera? Well, again, that's no problem. We come into the static NAT mappings, so we're going to have to delete this and add a new one. So we'll say 80, 80, 192.168.99.2, and we're going to forward to 8081, add, apply, and look what's happening. We're not seeing any change here. Now that's because the web browser that we're using is accessing the root configuration on its public IP address on port 80. So now we've lost our direct access to the router management interface, but that's not a problem. We can do 8080 up here, and our routers also respond on port 8080. And there we go, we've logged in, and we can check that configuration. Um, IP routing, port forwarding, static NAT mappings, and we can see it available here. If we now go back to the camera over here, let's remove the 8081 and see what happens. We've got waiting, we've got the login, brilliant. Login, and we've got the picture back. So you can see there, there is two ways of either using the, the same port number to forward or changing the port number and forwarding onto a different port number. Um, 
just be aware that if you're doing the um, static NAP mapping or port forwarding using this simple configuration, this forwards on both TCP and UDP traffic. This isn't protocol specific. You can't narrow it down to TCP or UDP. If you want to narrow down to a specific protocol, TCP, for example, as we're using here, then the other option is to use the firewall. The firewall can be configured to forward on traffic and you can really be very specific in the firewall configuration. So you could say um, the port, the protocol and even the TCP flags. But we'll do that in another video. Let's wrap this one up here. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching.